Dragon presents Chinese Medicine in America. My name is Joel Penner. I'm a doctor of Oriental Medicine, a California State Licensed Acupuncturist and Herbalist, and a professor of Oriental Medicine. I'm also co-author of the textbook Zong Fu Syndrome's Differential Diagnosis and Treatment. In this episode, I will be talking about the element fire. Each element has a great number of correspondences, both in the natural world and in the human body. Each element also has an overriding property or group of properties which reflect its nature. One of the things I love most about Chinese medicine is its pragmatism. The Chinese understand that when we observe nature, we see a map of the way life works. Therefore, by applying the principles of nature to the human being, we find that the human, being part of nature, works in exactly the same way. Here next to me, is a chart showing a limited number of these correspondences. I've chosen to discuss just those that are the most relevant to Chinese medicine. The properties of fire are pretty obvious, and as we continue, you'll see how these properties relate to the medicine. As you can see here, the properties of fire are flaming or moving upward, warming and brightening. Let's look at the correspondences now, and I'll describe how they're relevant to diagnosis and treatment. The color associated with fire is red, and the energy or chi of fire is heat. In the medicine, things that are hot are usually red, red skin, red eyes, and red pimples. A red tongue is an important indicator of heat in the system. The flavor associated with fire is bitter. The bitter taste tends to be cooling, and in that way nourishes the heart and keeps fire from blazing. Many vegetables are bitter which may be why many of us don't eat enough of them. We often substitute other bitter substances which also affect the heart, but not always in such a benign manner as vegetables. Coffee and tea are bitter. I think that drinking a certain amount of coffee or tea can provide some of the bitter taste the heart needs, and in that sense is nourishing to the heart. However, these substances have additional properties that, if used over time, can be detrimental to the heart. Too little bitter is bad for the heart in that it can allow fire to blaze. Too much bitter can also injure the heart by cooling it too much. Many of the medicinal herbs we use are bitter. They are often heat clearing herbs which have antibiotic properties. Overuse of these herbs can cool the fire so much that the person can become listless and without vigor. The smell associated with fire is scorched. This is the smell of burning like the smell of freshly ironed clothes or clothes from a dryer. If you detect a burning odor, you could assume some type of heart imbalance. The season associated with fire is summer and its phase is growth. We see in nature that if you plant your crops in the spring, the heat of summer will make them grow. All of the elements have both yin and yang components. This includes the organ systems. Each of the five organ systems are composed of yin and yang organs. The yin organ, or zong, is solid and contains the chemical elements necessary to perform its function. The zong associated with fire is the heart. The yang organ, or fu, is hollow. It provides space for storage and allows for movement. The fu associated with fire is the small intestine. The small intestine provides the space for a large part of digestion to occur. While the heart expresses itself by burning upward, the small intestine catalyzes the ashes of what has been burned. This means that the product of digestion is processed in the small intestine and moved to its next location. Here the fluid and solid are separated, with the fluid being sent to the bladder and the solid being sent to the large intestine. Song Fu is the Chinese name for internal organs. You will learn in more detail about the functions of the organs when we do episodes on them in the future. For now, I will try to keep my explanation simple. The sense organ associated with fire is the tongue, and we find in certain conditions related to heart function that difficulty speaking or a stiff tongue or aphasia are common symptoms. The tissue associated with fire is vessel tissue. If we have blood vessel issues such as varicose veins or arterial sclerosis, we look to treat the heart. Sweat is the body fluid associated with fire. When the heart is stressed, we sweat in order to cool fire. The pulse associated with fire is bounding. 
The heart is the muscle that pumps the blood, and the beats present a bounding sensation like a kangaroo bounding across the outback. All of the elements have mental emotional aspects associated with them that can either positively or negatively affect the health of the organ system. Emotions have both positive and negative aspects also. Often only the negative aspects are cited because they're the ones that generate imbalance. The positive emotion associated with fire is joy. We can define joy as a feeling of continuous well-being. It is the balance point where people should be most of the time. Excess joy, known as euphoria, can be injurious, however, if it continues for too long. Everyone experiences periods of euphoria. However, prolonged euphoria can burn out the flame. The negative aspect is called lack of joy. I see it expressed as melancholy, a depressed stiffness or woodenness. This indicates a deficiency of fire, possibly due to burning itself out through overtaxation or because there's not enough wood to fuel the fire. We know that joy is yang because it moves outward and is invigorating. We know that lack of joy is yin because it moves inward. It's slow and non-expressive. The sound associated with fire is laughter. Laughter, depending on its type, can be either expressing joy or heart problems. Nervous laughter <laughs> can indicate heart problems, as can the laughter of someone who is experiencing a manic episode. And of course, a lack of laughter can certainly be a sign of melancholy. In my opinion, the emotional associations are some of the most important and the most fun to think about. The Chinese say that all disease is internally generated. What creates internal imbalance is toxic emotions or toxic thought. Energy, or chi, is the bridge between emotion and physicality. If what we are feeling or thinking prevents chi from getting where it needs to go, the organ functions become weak. In this case, if we don't have enough joy in our lives, our hearts become weak. Emotions propel our thoughts. Intense emotion makes thought very powerful, while lassitude or lethargy makes our thoughts weak or impotent. If you think a thought with joy as the motivating force, it will be a heartfelt thought and have a positive effect, while thoughts associated with a lack of joy will be of no consequence. When the internal system is compromised through toxic emotion, the immunological functions, which the Chinese call Wei Qi or protective Qi, does not function as well as it should, and external pathological influences such as colds or flu will be allowed to enter the body. Finally, let's talk a little about the major energetic relationships associated with fire and their medical consequences. Here's our five element chart. First, fire promotes earth. So what happens when earth overacts on fire? The stomach is the yang organ associated with earth. If it becomes excess by drinking too much alcohol, for instance, it can become overly hot and overact on the heart, creating a condition called phlegm fire disturbs the heart. The patient exhibits manic behavior with insane laughing along with other mania symptoms. Over time, the fire burns out and we see severe depression or melancholy. This is what we call mania depression or bipolar disease. Second, Fire controls metal. What happens if metal insults fire? The large intestine is the yang or fu organ associated with metal. It can become excessive due to constipation, which can then insult the small intestine and compromise its role in digestion. Okay, that's going to do it for this episode. Please remember, if you have questions, please contact me at joel at americandragon.com. In the next episode, we will discuss the element Earth. See you then.